Two billion people today follow this idol named JC. Those people who are promoting it, like Salzman, like Ben Shapiro, they have blood on your hands. You're, you're actually a Mossad agent. <laughs> oh. Jew is tolerated in Islamic lands as long as he has the status of a dimmi. Don't you dare ever criticize Islam. Ben Shapiro is uh, documented as saying, enemies, civilian casualties, okay by me. Yeah. Perfect like gaslighting? It's like, it's, it's a type, of, that's the exact definition of gaslighting. All whole history of Europe is Christians attacking Jews. Not Muslims attacking Not Jews. Not Muslims attacking Jews, but Christians attacking Jews. We know there are many benefits to the use of black seed according to the authentic statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. That's why I use the black seed by Tasneem and 50% of the profits from your order will go towards establishing the Dean Center, the Masjid and Megadawa Center. Use promo code the Dean Show for 15% off. Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. Welcome to the Dean Show, I'm your host. We got another exciting program for you. My next guest, Dr. Shadi. Salam alaikum. This is the Dean Show. I love you very much. I love all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to you. Yes, I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam. Welcome to the Dean Show. The Dean Show. Wa alaikum salam. I'm Salah. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Alhamdulillah. So, for the um, audience that's not familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, uh, Egyptian background, uh, but New Jersey born and raised. Um, spent 10 years outside of New Jersey trying to study the Deen and the Sharia, both with Shiuch and also uh, in, in an academic setting. I much preferred uh, studying privately with uh, scholars. Uh, then in the academic setting. And I spent a total of 10 years outside of New Jersey between that and then teaching uh, at different universities until I decided I want to go uh, into the Dawah sphere um, outside the academic setting where we can openly be Muslim and practice our deen and call to it. And so uh, I came back to New Jersey, joined the New Brunswick Islamic Center and started a type of learning uh, hub or institute called Safina Society. Uh, and you can learn about it at safinasociety.org. And we have online classes, we have a live stream, and now we have a soup kitchen. So all that in conjunction with the masjid has provided for the community a lot of different things to do. Um, so I'm very happy with our community and uh, it's so important you know, to be part of a community in this day and age. I wanna get your reaction to a certain um, who's considered an academic, mm -hmm. an intellectual. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, God Saad. I heard the name. Never watched his stuff, but I heard the name. He's uh, from Jewish background, I believe. Do you have something against Jews? No. As well, a Muslim well, well, cleric? And nothing inherently against did, Jews Did your at all? schooling as you were coming up, because you've studied in many different places, does yeah. it, did it teach you in your, uh, in your religion, but it's our religion, well, uh, to hate, to hate, to be anti-Semitic? Well, why don't, why don't you look at it like this? It, does Islam allow a man to marry a Jew? A Jewish a good, woman? That's a good point. So he's got a lover. How are you going to, how are you going to hate someone <laughs> yeah. you can marry? And how about this? They're going to have Muslim kids, right? They're uh -huh. going to have kids. That kids will be Muslim, right? Yeah. He's going to hate his mom. Wow. Right. Uh, that woman is going to be in the community. She's going to have sister-in-laws. She's going to have a mother-in-law. You're going to hate your daughter-in-law. You're going to hate your sister-in-law. It doesn't work like this. Like Just by um, luck of the draw of how you're born, it's by how you're treated. Uh, th these are important points that people really don't think about. There's this individual, and he's uh, he's been on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's been around, and many people are taking to many of the things that he said I've, he started popping up in my timeline does that mm -hmm. ever happen to you in a yeah he, he started popping up my timeline he too. Did too okay yeah <laughs> and he was being attacked apparently uh -huh. so i but i didn't get the whole picture i didn't see the whole you know these uh public figures are almost like their own little reality tv shows in themselves <laughs> and they have their own rivals and enemies and uh, -huh. uh so I didn't, I didn't uh, ever get into that, but why don't you tell me a bit about him and what he said? Yeah, so he was popping up in my timeline. I see him before, and 
Joe Rogan back a few years back, he was bringing on people like this, and he really had this uh, different view from now. I think he's changed a lot. I don't know if you know if you've heard of Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. He's changed a lot. We've academically we brought on some imams and others who would kind of critique some of the things his guests were saying, and we were point by point just go ahead and the blunders that the guests were making, some mm -hmm. of the purposeful statements that are out of context. We just academically point by point we uh, responded to m many of these things, and then he was one of those guests. So. That kind of time passed, forgot about it, but then he started popping up in my timeline. Mm -hmm. And I would see like, I was like, hold on, what's he doing? And it seemed like he, in a sophisticated way, he's bringing up things and he's planting seeds of hate. Mm. Which I, he's like planting seeds of hate. And he, he's, it seems like, and I'll let you judge for yourself, he's trying to put, seem like Muslims are really after Jews. Like Muslims are really hate Jews. He talks about his, his experience his experiences growing up in Lebanon or something. So I'm going to play this clip okay. and then see how you would respond to some, uh, some of this. The Palestinian-Israel conflict has nothing to do with land. It's an existential battle. Palestinians are always the noble victims, the anti-Semitism on campus. That's the anti-Semitism that simply comes from faulty education. The anti-Semitism that comes from the Middle East is inherent to the doctrines of that faith. The Jew is tolerated in Islamic lands as long as he has the status of a dhimmi. Don't you dare ever criticize Islam. That's Islamophobic. Any land that has ever been occupied by Islam can never revert to anybody else. So if you have diabetes, it's the Jew who caused it. If your wife cheated on you, it's the Jew who put those thoughts in her All head. Right, so if it's, he's saying right, So you're familiar? There's a ring a bell now? Yeah, I mean, I've seen his face before. I didn't know that this was his position. Um, but and I've invited him on. I invited him on to speak to people like yourself. I yeah. said, come on, you know, you keep popping on my timeline. Come and talk with us. Come and yeah. talk. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's I, I, I very mean, misinformed. I mean, if this was the case, what about the last thousand years? I guess we weren't practicing this. Our forefathers weren't practicing Islam properly mm -hmm. because Jews have been living in Egypt for a long time. Yeah. In Palestine, Jerusalem, in all those areas, Nazareth. Uh, uh, in Morocco, in Iraq, mm -hmm. Avi Shlaim is an Iraqi Jew. His Who's that? Avi Shlaim. Yes. He's an Iraqi historian. Uh -huh. And his whole history was that the Iraqi Jews refused to leave Iraq to go to Israel. They didn't want to migrate. Iraqi Jews refused. Yeah, yeah they didn't want to migrate. They were happy in Iraq. Uh-huh. What he discovered, and of course he had to take it back, and he, he walked it all back, but he was persona non grata in Israel for a while because of this. He went and he discovered that Mossad agents blew up synagogues. You're, you're actually a Mossad agent. <laughs> oh, yes. Blamed it on Arabs, dressed up as Arabs. Dressed up as Arabs. Is this conspiracy theory? No, no, this is history. Up? This is history. This is history. He became persona non grata in Israel because of this. And he had to say, oh, I may have misread things and I have whatever. Yeah. But look up the history of Avi Shleim is that he's an Iraqi Jew who discovered that the Iraqi Jews did not want to leave Iraq to move down to Israel. Israel wanted them, right? So the Mossad then blew up synagogues, blamed it on the Arabs and say, you're not safe, come over, right? So if the inherent law of Islam is that we must hate Jews, show me one verse that says that, that you must hate them. No, the Quran will tell us what they've done, wrong so we don't imitate it so we don't fall in the same trap mm -hmm. the same mistake it's saying essentially the first this first nation they made mistakes mm -hmm. the christians they made these mistakes you don't make these mistakes okay this is the message of the quran when the quran looks and says and tells you what they've done and what they did to moses that wasn't right or jesus that wasn't right is so that you muslim don't do that with your law with your prophet but show us a verse that says go hate them all it's childish. It's like this is the stuff that uneducated person is going to uh, swallow and believe, right? Where we just said earlier, uh, does not, does, doesn't a Muslim uh, Sharia allow a Muslim to marry a Jew? Yes. Uh, how then he's going to marry someone that he hates and produce a child from her who is a Muslim? Is he supposed to hate his mom? Or the rules of the mother still apply? 
so the rules of the mother is the mother is the top, the one that you owe your loyalty to, that you owe your goodness to. Why in Islam, you, whether if, Jewish or Christian? If you did like a Jordan Peterson, you went into <clears throat> psyche and stuff. I mean, you got some experience uh, dealing with people and how, how would you reading people? How would you read? So why, what's he is this? Is he doing this? because he just hates and he's projecting his hate? Is he doing it because he's getting paid? Why would someone who's an, ac uh, an academic, an intellectual, yeah. he, he should know this history you're talking about? Uh, is he projecting? That seems to me maybe what it is. is uh, and he's trying to find himself some uh, way around the reality. The reality is that you, your people that you support, have inflamed these Palestinians by oppressing them generation after generation. So there's a 1948, then there's 1968, or 69, and 67, sorry. And there are many other wars afterwards. And he right? said it's nothing about the land. Nothing about the land. Then wh what about the Muslim, the Jews that lived everywhere else? Palestinian groups, leaders, military groups saying, we have nothing against Jews. We tolerate Jews. We lived with Jews thousands of years together. The 300,000 people left Spain. Where did they live to? China? Japan? Australia? No. They left to Turkey, they left to Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Albania in the Second World War. It was a small Muslim country and they had a few thousand Jews there. German Nazis Germany has occupied Albania. But none single Jew was killed in Albania. You know where the Muslims were hiding the Jews? They were hiding them in mosques, in basements, in, 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 in all types of places. And they saved all these 5,000 Jews in Albania. We're going to live together as the same as it was everywhere, as the same as Jews lived in Turkey, Algeria, Morocco, in Iran, till now, peacefully, in Germany, without any problems in China. In Islamic country. How about in Turkey? There were Jews. Bosnia. Right. In Bosnia, fan, there were Bosnia, Jews. To this day, you had yeah. Jews who fled and they flourished there in Bosnia, Albania, the Bessa. You heard of the yeah. Bessa. That's an Islamic concept. You know, uh, honoring your guests, taking care of, you know, giving your word. And they wasn't even in France. They were forging documents for Jews, particularly from the Nazis. In, in France, we have, there's documentation that Muslims brought in Jews. Let me ask you this question. If a group hates another group, the simplest, silliest, most reductionist way of going about it is say he hates me because of who I am. Mm -hmm. Right? Even America, they stopped saying Arabs, Muslims hate us for our freedoms. Right when that, they used to say after nine eleven, yeah, you remember that. Why? It's like you are going to the laziest uh, possible trope, poss uh, re reduction of the matter to something that's not believable. Mm -hmm. As easily you can find evidence against it. Maybe they're hating you because of something you did to their fathers, mm -hmm. and has become transmitted now. These that nation, that people, they took our homes. They took this. Don't you think people talk at the dinner table? Right about what happened to whom? Like we're we're sitting in family and I in our masjid, and a man casually picks up his phone and he says, "Look at this. We went last summer, and we found our grandparents' home, and our grandparents lived here, and they were kicked out. They had to flee on the spot." In one of these documentaries, they tell us that the Jewish, uh, uh, the the Haganah soldier in his old age, he says, "We walked in the house. We found nobody in the house." But the coffee, the steam was coming out of the coffee. That means people were just living here. This morning they woke up. Wow. And because of this Nakba, they saw that we're coming, they fled. They didn't even pick up anything. Right? The hum pe a family was living here this morning. The, the steam was still coming out of the coffee. And they ran. So these terrible deeds that were done, are they just going to be backspaced, deleted, forgotten? And you're going to now say... It's not because of the deed, it's because of my identity. No. You could... Okay, so racism is bad, right? So does that mean... What a flip and a manipulation. Uh, a complete a manipulation. So racism is bad. We all know that. Because it, in, in anything that you're born with, no one can hate you for something that you're born with. No one can be against you just something. It's unfair. So racism is bad. Does that mean there's never going to be a conflict between a white man and a black man that is not a valid conflict, Right. So black, uh, will, does that mean that uh, the black man will never, ever do anything wrong again? Of course, he's going to commit crimes. He's going to do wrong things. Whites will commit crimes, do wrong things. It may be they happen to be white, happen to be black, right? Incidentally, he's black. So there's the incidentally part of things, but there's the action that the person did that is likely the reason for hatred. I mean, if anyone with some kind of, I mean, he, he's got the uh, enough degrees 
Let me ask you this. Um, the Khaliji Arabs, the Gulf Arabs, are very much open to trade and business mm -hmm. and good relations with Israel, right? They were pro nor they were up to now up to almost normalized completely, right? So is there something inherently different about the religion of the Gulf Arab and the Palestinian? Yeah. How about when Anwar Sadat went and made peace? Egyptian across the uh, uh, the ne next country over. Is there anything inherently different between the Palestinian and the Egyptian in his religion that one made peace and one doesn't? The Egyptian, yeah, the difference was the Egyptian wasn't aggressed upon and abused and his family home taken yeah. and his land taken. That's why it was easy for them to make peace. He, he, he gives some, uh, some stories of growing up as a kid. They couldn't wear the Star of David and everything was blamed on the Jews. It was an atmosphere of hate. Where? And, in Lebanon. Is there mm. something going on in Lebanon specifically there that would have him? And this is, he's just talking about he's narrating uh, his own experiences. And it sounds a lot like... Um, and this is going to come off badly on some people, but I'm just asking a question. All history of Israel begins with the pogroms, the pogroms and the Holocaust, and before the Holocaust. Russians killing Jews, Hungarians killing Jews, Germans attacking Jews, all these nations attacking Jews, right? Um, it, these nations didn't all know each other. They didn't all plot this. They didn't all plan it. But it happened that the all, whole history of Europe is... Christians attacking Jews. Not Muslims attacking Not Jews. Not Muslims attacking Jews. But Christians attacking Jews. The history of the origin of Israel begins there. And then Theodor Herzl came and said, we need a country for ourselves, and the rest is history, mm -hmm. right? But instead of just saying, like, the premise here is that the Christians were hating Jews for being Jews. Not any other reason. I'm saying, why do I need to swallow that premise? Why couldn't there actually have been a justified conflict between the two? And then one went to excess, right? Like we can't uh, doubt that the Christians went to excess in their attacks on Jews, uh, kicked them out, killed them all, mm -hmm. etc. But just because one side went to an excess does not mean the other side also didn't contribute to the fight a little bit, right? So there could be blame on both sides. And then one side went to excess in their hatred and their anger. So not so. I know this is like in the woke culture. This is a, is a crazy idea, but it's actually very simply, factually, and accurate. Not everyone who is a victim is a hundred percent blame free, right? So if I come here and I'm your guest, and I start, you know, uh, acting crazy and knocking stuff over, mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Like I knock over this camera. And it's a, f I don't know how many thousand dollar camera. Now you're a jujitsu fighter, your son's a jujitsu fighter, and you send me to the hospital, right? Who looks bad? You do, right? Yeah. But I'm also not <laughs> blame free, right? So just because one side is severely beaten down does not mean there's no instigation here. And that's all I'm saying is that when someone like Gatsad comes and says, in Lebanon, they did this to us, rewind the tape. Rewind the tape and ask yourself, what did you do to them? This is narcissism. Okay. Uh, what did I... Kid comes from school. Nobody likes me in school. Okay. Let's rewind the tape. What did you do to them? Right? And we are in a culture, in Islam. All, all uh, Our culture comes summarized in the Quran. Zulaikha. The woman who seduced Prophet Yusuf. When she comes clean, she said, I'm the one who did it. And I will not make excuses for myself because the ego commands to evil. Our culture in Islam, anyone who has a successful relationship, as a marriage and a business and anything in life, takes responsibility. Take responsibility. Oh, they hate me. I, our mentality is if somebody doesn't like you, okay, go check if that person has issues with everybody else. If that person has issues with 30 other people, don't worry about it. He's got the issues. Mm. If that person gets along with everybody, but they hate you, you probably did something. Mm. That's my mentality. That's how I raise my kids and how I, my mentality with myself. If I come out, have an issue with a person and I find that person is, has issues with everybody, I say, hey man, so-and-so, me and him got an issue. He said, oh, me too. Mm. Oh, guess who else? Him too. I said, okay, I'm, I'm good. 
he is the one with the issue. Mm -hmm. He's an argumentative person. Mm -hmm. But if I find everyone says, oh, him, he's a great guy. And I go to the next person, he, you have a fight with him, he's a great guy. Then I know I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't do something wrong, it was a mistake. The approach you should take to a relationship is, I'm going to put my ego down. Hey, what did I do wrong? If I did anything wrong, I apologize. Not this narcissistic view that you don't like me because I'm me, because I'm an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't like me because uh, I'm brown, because I'm tan, because I'm Muslim. No, because I'm from Jersey. No, that's not how it works, relationships. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's narcissistic like that, this marriage won't work. His businesses won't work. Nothing is going to work. My intention of even bringing up a person like uh, Saad, God, and what Gad, uh, bringing it up is not to uh, smash the guy, yeah, but to talk with him and reason with him and even invite him to talk with us. I wonder if he has any Muslim friends, you know, to go ahead or, or to come out and discuss um, some of these issues. And there might be some because Islam is perfect. Mm -hmm. We say this is from the creator of the heavens and earth. Muslims are imperfect. So a Muslim can make a mistake or Muslims, right? We're not tribalists. Uh -huh. Our people, as the Prophet wasallam said, uh, he quoting a pre-Islamic saying. Yes. The pre-Islamic saying was wrong. The pre-Islamic saying was, support your brother, oppressor or oppressed. Yeah. So the Sahaba knew this is not right. True. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, said it in a gathering. And the Sahaba said, oh, Master of Allah, how do we support our brother if he's the oppressor? Right? Well, the first premise here is that a Muslim can be an oppressor. We could be wrong. And the Prophet then said, is by stopping him from oppressing. So we recognize a Muslim could be wrong. A Muslim can be uh, racist. A Muslim can all those things as an oppressor. Right? He can be uh, uh, a hater of Jews in the wrong. Right? And he could be a hater of some race in the wrong. And our job is to stop him from that. Uh, the bonds of brotherhood aren't broken because a Muslim commits a sin. The bond of brotherhood is still there because he's a Muslim. But the responsibility of brotherhood is to correct him. So mm -hmm. could a man like God Saad be totally a victim? It's rationally possible. It's rationally possible that the kids he played with in Lebanon inherited hatred from their fathers. And their fathers did a blanket statement, we're going to hate all Jews. And he became the victim of that. Is that possible? 100% it's possible. All right? It's very possible. There's, mm -hmm. no, there's nothing here that's going to promote that um, Muslims are never going to make a mistake. Right? Yeah. Let's touch upon one more thing <clears throat> from his interview. And it's interesting, these like these relationships are being started. Like uh, I, I believe this is um, an Indian interviewer, mm -hmm. someone who uh, might be of the Hundit, Huditva, yeah. Hundid, uh, what is it? Hindutva. Yeah. Hundutva. Yeah. <laughs> so you have all these strange alliances happening yep. to kind of gang up, to come after. It's, yeah. uh, let's go to this next clip. Is always viewed through the lens of, you know, until 1948, the Jews and Muslims lived in perpetual loving peace in that area. And then these really nasty guys from Europe that have absolutely no link to that land called Israel, absolutely none, came along and then they took over that land, stole it. And since they've been engaging in a 75 year genocide. Now, not, not a single syllable of that is true. But yet that is the message that is, that is promulgated in, on every campus. So it wouldn't be surprising then that if I am a... Pro so one point I want to make about this is that in the um, war of ideas, uh, saying something outrageous to shift the debate from Palestinian babies being killed, he's now try shifting it now to everyone hates Jews. Is this perfect like gaslighting? It's like, it's, it's a type, of... that's the exact definition of gaslighting. And the way to do it is to go so extreme that it can't, you can't ignore it, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what Trump did in his campaign. He's a manipulator of reality. He has no sense of fixed reality. By going so far off in an extreme, an idea that nobody can ignore, right? All these Mexicans are a bunch of rapists and stuff. Nobody can ignore it. But now what are we talking about? You got everyone on the defensive now. 
no, we're not rapists. No, Mexicans are not rapists, right? What he, by pushing it, it's almost like the Overton window concept, which is that um, it's like the law of averages, right? When you, when, you, when you throw a discussion way off course, the middle now is changed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel that he's doing. Uh, and, and now um, in a world that is watching some of the most worst you know, deaths and injuries that are happening to kids and, and Palestinians and hospitals and everything, in that world that we're living in, and we're all seeing this in 4K, he's now coming and holding himself to be the victim. Wow. Right? I mean, you just took it way over here and now you got the conversation and whoever he pulls into the conversation, no matter what side you're on, he's won because so, he's pulled you away from the actual discussion that should be happening. So he's got enough degrees. He's got enough education. He knows what he's doing. Man. He's, I'm sure he knows what he's doing yeah. and saying some absurd things like, oh, my wife cheated on me. It's the Jew. My, it's raining. It's the Jew. So taking it so far to make somebody say, no, 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 no. We don't let, we don't hate Jews. Wait a second. That should not be where our energy is going right now. Our energy should be going to the one oppressed the most, mm -hmm. which is right now the Palestinian. Yeah. Right. And that's this is reframing the issue by going to a, uh, an extreme that forces you to respond. I'm going to go to the going moving along. And again, uh, if he accepts our invitation, you or anybody else who uh, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. You, you're ready to talk with someone like Saad. Huh? Why not? Yeah. OK, beautiful. Saad, you see, we're giving you an invitation. Come, come to the table of uh, peace and understanding. We're trying to understand you, trying to understand us. And that's how we can uh, learn to get along better. huh? Uh, so there's a quote here. It says, uh, the genocidal mentality of a lot of Zionists, this is a Ben Shapiro before the war. And you give a um, quote where Ben Shapiro is uh, documented saying, enemies, civilian casualties, okay by me. Yeah. And then it goes on to say, you go on to say, doesn't happen because the country makes, it a, po makes a policy. A genocide happens because all the people want it to happen enough people want it to happen when you have a man like ben shapiro who has a fo a big following is one of the founders of the christian-based conservative daily wire funded by a christian and a zionist all of their people except for candace owens and sh uh, we commend her for that have been extremely pro-zionist israel cheerleading having no sense of condemnation at all for any Thing that Israel does and if you say a single word this is a little move that will have you called anti-semitic um, let's mean, this is you that's me let's you add to that this? let's add to that Salzman lately uh, recently I should say who's that uh, a politician out of Florida okay. was asked elected she was elected into some office or other yeah how many Palestinians is enough? Dead. She was asked. She was asked. Uh -huh. And her answer, all of them. Right. So a genocide doesn't happen uh, because a government says, hey, let's do a genocide. People aren't that stupid, right, to put it on paper like that. Uh, a genocide happens, though, when it becomes millions upon millions upon millions of people are totally okay with it. They totally view this the opposition as an enemy. Uh, as an animal, and they totally view the one doing it as a necessary relationship. I cannot go without this relationship. Whatever they want, I'm going to give it to them. All right. And we all have situations where sometimes you are so like leveraged, whatever the person asks, you're going to give it to them because you're it, that that happens in life and it happens in politics. So it happens. A, a genocide happens when millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people are accepting of it. Go under. Uh, the comment section anytime one of these figures posts something about the Palestinians like a Palestinian baby being killed it's insane look at the comments and the inhumanity of people right oh they probably put the baby up uh, uh, put her in the line of fire right oh they, they, they put their offices underneath the hospital on purpose oh these are alligator tears Okay. When there's like blood flowing down her face, people lost their humanity. And when I click, I click on the profiles to see, to get myself a micro image of who's saying this. When I click on the profile, you know what I find? Hmm. I find a regular woman in middle America somewhere 
the rest of her tweets are like, I baked a, I baked a pie. We're going to Thanksgiving. We're going to watch a football game. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. My daughter's a cheerleading today. A regular human being who has be her uh, church or what have you has steered her into being having the gall to make a comment like that under a child that just got killed, right? That, to me, is a big sign that this genocidal mentality has spread far and wide, right? And those people who are promoting it, like Salzman, like Ben Shapiro, they have blood on your hands. Everything that you do, that you post, you're responsible for, right? And if a million, if it takes a, uh, 10 million people to commit a crime, right, as, as, as ghastly and as big as a genocide that we're seeing and probably we haven't seen the end of it, every single one of them has some of that blood on their hands for supporting it, right? And in some cases, maybe even not speaking out against it. I want to get into, uh, <clears throat> we'll call it the strange relationships. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing this uh, with God's side. You have this and others who are bringing on some of these um, extreme Hindutva and they're combining yep. with them. Have you seen this also? Yep. Yeah, it's, yep. it's interesting. Yeah, right. And then you see right now what's happening. I believe it's like 80%, if I'm not wrong, 70, 80% of Zionists are actually Christian. Mm -hmm. So I want to get into, I interviewed a, a pastor, a Christian pastor, who kind of unpackaged this for me. And then you can tell me, I just for the audience, um, I'll go through this real quickly. Uh, what's said is that for the first 1,800 years of history, that Christians had no concept of this pre-tribulation, this rapture, mm -hmm. uh, that became that's prevalent today. And the first phase, you had this not John Nelson Darby in the 1830s. He went out and he got all of these strange, extreme teachings, put them together. And then in the second phase, you had a con man by the name of uh, Cyrus Schofield, who was um, a con man. He went to jail, came out, never went to seminary school or um, Christian theology school or any of these things, but he ended up getting his DD, Doctor in Divinity. He meets a man who is connected to uh, or knew uh, John Nelson Darby, and he t taught him these teachings of of um, many of these, uh, the rapture and things that are connected to what we have modern day that's connecting it to the um, state of um, the Zionist state. What happens then is this uh, person, Schofield, he, he ends up um, meeting a person who invites him to this Lotus Club. This Lotus Club is a high-end club. Uh, and the person that invites him invites him. He's an uh, he's a uh, a American uh, attorney. Not uh, he's an attorney or vice president vice president or, or president of a of a huge American Zionist organization. Anyways, they connect. He takes him to the UK, and then they fund they fund they connect. He connects him with the Oxford Printing Press, uh, Oxford Publishing Company, and they push out a million copies. Of the Schofield Bible, and in the footnotes, it has many of the exegesis, you know, the interpretation of certain verses. You know how it is, same in mm -hmm. Islam. If you, you know, Robert, the Robert Bobby Spencer, mm -hmm. he has his own tafsir yeah, of certain verses. Yeah. So you can imagine if you're reading his interpretations, where it's going to take you, yeah. even though it's 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 something that's um, uh, of his own whims and desires. So this person, he puts uh, he puts these interpretations into the Schofield, in the footnotes, mm -hmm. and then this kicks off, kicks off, kicks off. There's uh, the late great planet Earth, sold 40 million copies. There was another series that sold like 80 million copies. And one example of this that the pastor tells me, and many of these things are not biblical. They weren't known for the first 1800 years mm -hmm. of Christianity. So wrapping up, there's one example, is that Jesus coming back twice. Mm -hmm. And Jesus will remove the Christians, take them to heaven. There'll be seven years of tribulation. Then Christ will attack. Then the Antichrist will attack the, the Jews in Israel. And then Jesus will come back and save the Jews, the Zionists. And this is pretty much the pastors telling me. And you have people like James White and others who are also exposing this because they're saying this is a Zionist doctrine that took over the churches of America. Mm -hmm. Until this day, yeah. What do you say about that? Uh, that's the result of a religious movement that doesn't have a tradition. Um, it's very easy to sneak in an idea that has no precedent. Mm. And the nature, of the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism, is that Catholicism has a tradition, 
Mm -hmm. Like you can't just pop in. Let me open a Catholic church and interpret verses and interpret the scripture. You you need to have studied with that tradition and take it on so that you don't bring some crazy new idea. Protestantism is not like that. Protestantism is a rebellion against that tradition. Anyone can open the scripture yourself and open your own church and preach as Mm -hmm. you wish. That kind of tradition is ripe for innovations, right? Where someone could put something in and spread it far and wide. And that's exactly what happened with the Schofield Bible, which is now everyone's not getting educated on what this Bible is because that's the source of evangelical Zionism, which is the concept that if we build the kingdom, we bring back Israel as a kingdom, as a nation, then Christ will come back. In truth, uh, according to many pastors and, 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 and in Christian theology, what Jesus meant was a kingdom in your soul. Right, Jesus says, mine is the kingdom of heaven, not of the earth. Mm -hmm. So the truth of of that kingdom, according to their own scriptures, is that it is a spiritual kingdom, not a kingdom made here. So neither does it have a basis in Jewish scripture, as in, in Judaism, only the Messiah can bring back the Holy Land, nor is it any basis in Christian scripture, because in Christian scripture, what Jesus came back for or what Jesus called his kingdom, that he commanded his people to build, and when you build it, I come back, is a kingdom in your hearts, a place for God in your heart and in your soul, not a physical land of, uh, uh, with borders and, and made of brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. So it's the, 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 the tradition, rebellion, or rejection of tradition of Protestantism that allowed for the Schofield Bible, which let's trace the money. According to most records, it's undisputed that the Rothschilds are the one who paid for it. Wow. Right? This massive uh, Zionist family who has now their wealth is in the trillions and who are one of the biggest bankrollers of Israel. Like, don't people put two and two together? They're the biggest bankrollers of the state of Israel. They have supported it with so much money. And they're the same people who supported the spread of this Schofield Bible. Right? Right? I mean, they know the numbers. They know... Help people understand this. So for the layman, because <clears throat> most uh, Christians, they just follow this. They've been fed this. But now this is showing... This is another lie. This is a con man. It's not part together. of Christianity. So you can interpret a certain verse, just like Islamically. You can, and then we have Prophet Muhammad who's interpreted. Then you have his companions who are interpreted. Then you have the scholars and whatnot. Here you have a con artist. Yeah. He went, and in the footnotes... They're taking this John Nelson Darby and whatever other ideas, and they're connecting this to the modern Zionist state right now. Correct. So now Christians feel it's a part of their creed. They're yeah. sinful while they're seeing babies being blown yeah. up. And instead of you know showing mercy and love and compassion and standing up and being a voice for true justice, peace, they feel now now that they're sinful. This is part of my creed. I have to support mm-hmm. and force force prophecies that are fake. I was in Texas. All the churches. There were more stars of David on the churches. And they're huge billboards, mega churches, down the highways of Houston. More stars of David than crosses. And more support of Israel than mention of Jesus. And it all originates from this concept. From this con man, crook, who interpolated it into their religion. And that's why in Islam we have a grave warning of who you take your religion from and innovation and chains of transmission. The chain of transmission, where did you get this from? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, if you break that chain of transmission and say, no, anyone can interpret as they wish, because you can interpret as you wish, write it down, form a church, and convince others of it. Does it make it true, right? And that's the thing about some people have a lawyerish mentality. If I can argue it and convince people, it must be true. That's Mm -hmm. not the case at all, right? Truth is fixed. Truth, there is a right and wrong to most things, right? And in the concept of the kingdom of Christ, it is a kingdom of the hearts. In Christianity, I'm not saying it's that's in reality or not, because in Islam we don't have that, right? But in Christianity, the kingdom that Jesus is talking about is not the land of Israel. It mm-hmm. is a kingdom of mercy and spirituality in your own self, mm-hmm. right? And that's what he was talking, so it's a metaphorical kingdom. Yeah. Uh, and it's been then that those verses have been used now to intend that it means Israel. And now you can see why there's this such a strange, strange relationship. I was asking the pastor, 
And he was the one that was actually bringing this light to me. He was explaining it, um, Pastor Rick, and the people who watched the program that I did with him. And I asked him, I said, look, do you get offended mm -hmm. when I say, Jesus, peace be upon him? He says, no, Eddie, no. I mean, you know that we love Jesus. Yeah. We love Jesus. We love his blessed mother. Again, I said, let's get the elephant out of the room. I told him, you know, we don't believe he's the literal son of God, that he's now um, God. But we love him just like, and we call him what he was called to in the Bible. He was called the servant of God, a prophet of God. We confirm this. Now we have our our parting of the ways, but all these other things, there's so many things we do have in common. Yeah. We, you probably have more in common with us than maybe some of your own family members. Mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican, this, that, and the other, you're going to just chew each other up. But over here on the other side, I want to play this next clip. And that's where it goes into strange relationships. I want to just listen to this uh, this rabbi. And again, this is not with no vicious, this this uh, attempt to, to, we'd love to get along and have peace with everybody, but this is just pointing out something that is obvious, but maybe not so obvious for some people. It's not dreams of all kinds of mechalele Shabbat that had a dream, all of a revelation. We saw what happened with the revelation of Maria. 2,000 years of suffering came to the world. Christian Inquisition, Spain, Portugal, Holocaust, pogroms, from a dream of a prostitute who cheated on her husband. That's it. From that, two billion people today follow this idol named JC. Why? One dream. A lot of dreams. There's people that uh, live in illusion even when they're awake, not when they sleep. When they awake, they have... So he's from Queens. What's he talk he's talking about dreams. He's talking about Paul and the way he's, he's... No, he was talking about in that video that different rabbis have been having different dreams about the Messiah coming mm -hmm. as a result of this war. Or it's not even a war at this yeah. point because there's only one side being smashed to bits. So he was saying, oh, some rabbis said Moshiach is coming. Messiah. Some rabbi said this, some rabbi. So he said they all have dreams of this, right? And he's saying our religion is not based on dreams, right? Our religion is based on scripture. And then he said, he went off on this tangent. He said, look where dreams got us, okay? The dream of Maria, the Virgin Mary. Yes. And then he goes on and calls her what he calls her, that a Muslim even uh, wouldn't even accept to repeat it point being is that you get this uh like a sting it's like yeah you know you know what i'm talking. and and they laughed the audience laughed now when i uh say something like this sometimes inevitably a rabbi will come and say no 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 he's not the right belief listen it is a fact you cannot bend around and play games that they don't believe jesus to be a born purely born child from a man from a husband and a wife you can't get around this. At the very bare minimum, he's a bastard. Oh, the beloved shit from saying this stuff. But just to clarify, ask any rabbi, the one who wants to do the most gymnastics and try to make amends with the Christians. No, 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 we don't say, we didn't try to kill him. We didn't rat him out to the road. Fine, okay. What's his origin? Is he a son of marriage? Because in that case, he should be Jesus, son of so-and-so. So-and-so should be known. Marriage, as in Islam, in Christianity, in Judaism, is a public contract. There's no secret marriages. Mm -hmm. It's a public contract, so we know whose child is who. Mm -hmm. If I see a baby walking around, I should know who takes care of him. Because there is a ch child's result of this relationship, we all have to know the whole society, community, needs to know who's married to who, right? And whose kid is whose, because there's a financial relationship. Mm -hmm. Unlike friendship. There's no, no child's going to be born out of a friendship, so we don't need to know, Right. So, Jesus, son of whom, right? At the very least, the belief about him is, is very bad. Which again poses the question of evangelicals. I, I don't understand. How are you thinking? That, like, how are you thinking that the establishment of more people who believe in that and strengthening the nation that propagates this about your God, like... Do you put two and two together or you just use emotions? That, that's the reason. And that was my intention there to point out something that's very obvious to us. And I had a guest on once, a Christian. Uh, his name is Owen. 
uh, and he was talking about he was like wow I was when I once I got through the programming and I saw Muslims when they say Jesus they say peace be upon him mm-hmm. but then we have another group of people who are actually cursing him his mother and we just got to hear this live so I would say like for our Christian friends neighbors and whatnot I mean look I mean you're hating the people who yeah. who love Jesus and then, and then now you're sending money and supporting those who are saying the most evil things about and even for those people who are s- saying that for let's say for our jewish uh friends rabbis or whatnot i say come sit with us sit with someone like yourself and explain really who jesus was because they got also faulty into tape uh interpretation thinking that you know this thing about him being god we would we would talk about and give the proofs that he actually was the messiah and then maybe they'll switch their way also the muslim ends up believing the best things about the most people Yes. For example, in the Bible, Lot, Prophet Lut, he's a prophet in Islam. Mm-hmm. In Christianity, in, Ju- in Judaism, in the Old Testament, he goes astray. He's a kafir. Uh, you're talking about uh, Lot. Lot. With his two daughters. With his two daughters, Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't accept this. He's a kafir. In they, the Old Testament, we cannot accept that. We come to defend his honor. We defend his honor. And, 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 and it's important. This is why you see in the Quran. Okay. Every story, every mention of the Hebrew prophets, there's a reason for it. It's correcting what's false. So Allah says about Lut, we will save him and his followers. Whereas in the Bible, he's destroyed with the people of Lot. In these same rabbinical lectures, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. Go look up any rabbinical lecture on Lot. He ends up betraying Abraham and supporting Sodom and Gomorrah. And they say there were three other small cities that are not mentioned. But there are five evil cities, mm-hmm. not just two. I say about Lot. So what about Jake, Jacob? The worst things about Prophet Yaqub, and he is your patriarch. My point being is not we're, we're, we have to correct these things. People are looking for the truth. Christians are looking for the truth. If you're looking for the truth, look in Islam how Islam treats all of these noble messengers and prophets. Touch upon that for, for a second. So this is something, I'm glad you brought this up because now... We would take strong exception to this and say, no, this is something that is a fabrication. This is a, a slander. Lie. It's not true. It's not true. The truth is This that is where they change the text, the as text God Almighty is saying in the, in the Quran. And, and I want to also you know, make a call out to the Muslims that we need to take up the honor of Jesus. And it's no offense to the Christian world, but you ask the most objectively fair-minded Christian person, you haven't been able to stop the slandering of Jesus. You haven't been able to stop it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not slandered like this in Islam. There will be severe consequences, whether lawful or unlawful. We support what's lawful mm-hmm. by God's law and by society's law, but we can't control some people in our ummah. They will take the law in their own hands illegally, and they will severely harm. Anyone who says anything about the Prophet, know it, peace be upon him, knowing they're going to face a consequence. Okay? A law in the land, law of the land. And obviously, we don't condone We don't condone it. Yes. I don't condone it, but I'm warning you. Mm-hmm. Just like you don't walk around certain parts of Chicago, New York, New Jersey, count your money at the ATM machine. You will get robbed. Okay? A, a terrible thing will happen to you. Am I condoning it? No. Same thing with the Prophet. Expose yourself. To slander in the prophet in an Islamic environment, I'm warning you that people who break the law will break the law upon you, right? This is one of the reasons why it's protected from Allah. However it happens, the prophet is not slandered, alhamdulillah, in our ummah. No prophet should be slandered in the ummah of Islam, Jesus included. Europe... Including Moses, Jesus, Jesus, Moses. We love them all. One one time a man came and had an interfaith dialogue and a rabbi came and he spoke and he said, hey, I have a funny joke about Moses. Do you mind? The Muslim said, yes, I mind. You can't say those jokes about Moses. That's just a joke. It's not just a joke. He's, he's not just a person. Yes. He represents Allah. Look at all the creation of Allah. Look how big this universe is. When this creator of that universe sends you a representative, how special is he? So Europe, America, you have not been able to protect Jesus, although you claim to be Christians, right? Christian, if you're truly seeking God, won't 
God's people be the ones who protect his prophets. Mm -hmm. Like, forget the books, forget the arguments. Just like look at the gr on the ground. Jesus is more respected in the world of Islam than in, in the world of Christians. Wow. I mean, I want that to sink in. Say that part again. Jesus and Mary are more respected, more respected in the lands of Islam. In the lands of Islam, the lands of, of by, the Muslims, by the Muslims, by the Muslims, than they are in the lands of the Christians. Wow! So forget all the arguments, forget the debates. Let's let's look at the reality on the ground. Who's worshiping God the way Jesus worshipped God? Who's even superficially dressing like Jesus dressed? Who is honoring Jesus? Who is honoring the Virgin Mary more than anybody else? That you cannot a Muslim child cannot say Jesus. We say Sayyid Naisa. Prophet Isa, peace, upon, peace, be, upon, peace if, be upon him. If your son walked in, my son walked in and said, Hey, I heard this saying from Jesus. Who's Jesus? Your friend on the street? Yeah. You're about to get smacked. It's Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, right? You know this in our cultures, even the non religious people, the non religious people say, well, What Jesus? You have a friend on the street named Jesus, <laughs> right? Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So they should really think about this. Let's look at the practical reality. Who are God's people on the earth? Wouldn't they be the ones? most honoring to God's representatives. Talking about strange relationships now, continuing on, I think um, the Israeli reporter, they did, uh, this was, um, no, no, actually it was a Christian broadcasting network and they put a reporter in a outfit, a priest outfit, and I think in the first five minutes he was getting spit on. Recently, Israeli Channel 13 reporter Yossi Eli went undercover as a priest for a day. Dressed in a robe, he walked through the old city with Franciscan father Alberto. In the first five minutes, he was spat at five times by Orthodox Jewish Israelis. In this, Israel, this is in the yeah in this um, mm. in this uh, state. Yes, uh, is this something like if Muslims were in charge, how would how would Christians be and Jews be treated under the Muslim well, Islamic he, rule? I mean, he, uh, you've seen this with the spitting. Yeah, on? I saw those kids spitting on the uh, on the person dressed as uh, in in a garb of a the priest. Kids, adults. Yeah. Well, why don't we look at this? We earlier in the program we talked about the marriage. Yes. So, a husband would be obligated to have a room where his wife can do her Jewish or Christian worship, mm -hmm. have her books, um, and he would be obligated to facilitate that she goes to her church, right? And she goes to her synagogue. Now, what? So, see, it's not all lovey-dovey either. There are limits. What she cannot do, she, she's not going to promulgate this to the kids or publicize it in the house. You have a room to do it in, right? Why? Because while we have respect and tolerance to a degree, also we do believe in truth and falsehood. So we're not allowed to promulgate falsehood. But as a exception for you, because of the attribution of Abraham and Jesus, and in hope that we can absorb you into our families, mm -hmm. and hope that you could see how Muslims live and enter Islam, so we will have this accommodation. We don't give this accommodation to pagans. Yes. There's no marriage between Muslims and pagans. Okay. If that's what happens in the microcosm of the Islamic home, the same happens in the nation of Muslims, the country of Muslims. We say, Christians, where are your churches? Boom, boom, boom. Here are your churches. Now listen, you're not building anymore. These are your churches. You can go freely. No Muslim can touch these churches and an attack, mm -hmm. right? Nor have a protest in front of it, nor bother you, nor harass you, right? So... It's, uh, uh, it's a balanced approach where we do recognize, and by the way, there's not a man-made law, right, for us to say it's balanced or not, right? It's Allah's law that this is the truth. These group of people should be given some exceptions and leniency. Why? Because we want them in our lands. Why? Because we want them to see Islam and to enter Islam. That's it, ultimately the goal, although, yeah. And, and no, no, finish what you're saying. All, 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 although while we do this, there is no nothing stopping a Muslim from inviting you to Islam, mm -hmm. right? But you don't harass them. You don't stop them from doing their worship. And Islam, for now, the not yet Muslim hearing this, you're pretty much calling them to, to do what's in the Lord's Prayer, to submit their will mm -hmm. to the Creator of the heavens and earth, not to worship anything other than the one who Jesus worshipped. This is the most important thing is submission in Islam. And it's submission not to humans. It's submission to Allah. Even when... Islam calls for submission to a human. It's only because God commanded it. Like son, you must submit to your father's commands, right? Daughter, you must submit to your mom and dad too. Me, I must submit to the king, the government, right? 
means we can't go and start, start stealing and say, ah, hey, they're not Muslim, let's just steal, yeah. let's run the red lights, let's do all this stuff. Not allowed, not mm-hmm. allowed to do that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, in everything that, every human relationship, there are superiors and inferiors, but in that lawful relationship, not in essence. Like nobody is in essence superior to anyone else from the non-messengers, mm-hmm. right? There, uh, amongst Muslims, there's no superior or inferior. Even between Muslim and non-Muslim, there is one is superior in that he submitted properly. The other, if he submits, we, but we don't know. The Muslim may die outside of Islam and the Christian may enter Islam. So we can't make a comment on the two individuals. Mm-hmm. The status, though, the one who submitted to God fully and the one who submitted por- only a portion is a yeah. difference. So this is the concept that submission to God, why wouldn't you want to? You benefit why wouldn't you want to submit? Do you see how big space is? Like, do you see, look at how vast this universe is? How wealthy is this creator from in terms of his creation? How much has he given out? Why wouldn't you want to submit to this person? If someone said, come or, uh, uh, to this creator, someone said to you, listen, Elon Musk is coming. Do everything he says. You're going to do it. Maybe he's going to give you a little gift at the end, mm-hmm. a check or something like that, or a debit card with uh, $100,000 on it, right? Uh, you submit because we benefit from the creator. Creator doesn't benefit from us. Uh, one thing, a uh, couple more questions before we conclude. Uh, when we opened up the show with this uh, individual, God, Saad, um, he was mentioning their subservitude, being a dimmy. They always push this term, mm-hmm. dimmy, dimmy, dimmy. You're just like at the lowest. You know, we got uh, um, a legal alien. This is like dimmy, mm. worse than that. The dimmy, it means in the your responsibility Mm -hmm. that means they're in your territory that means you have to take care of them okay meaning their their property and their home has to be guarded it's protected their business has to be protected they their worship what they do has to be preserved Mm -hmm. you you have to allow them to continue doing that worship there is one law against them or one thing they cannot do you can't rule you can't govern why because you don't believe in the system of governance Right. Nobody can say, I want to be a president of the United States, although I don't believe in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So what is the law? The overarching inspiration of the law and the letter of the law comes from the religion, the Sharia. OK, can, so, can you equate uh, the Ten Commandments with Sharia? Like the Ten Commandments, like all the commandments that God gave that the scholars have looked upon and agreed upon the meaning of their words and 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 uh, just and the final just rule. a caveat so people can, can you give some other examples because people think sharia chopping off amputation of hands uh, it's me, like it's like what does it make up one or two percent of everything and that rest? is uh, one chapter okay nine crimes are uh penal crimes meaning there's physical punishment nine uh crimes are are are, are uh, physical punishment and these nine crimes have to be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. And let me give you an example. Uh, f- adultery and fornication. It's not even... The punishment is not actually just adultery and fornication. I'll tell you why. Because what it is is actually public destruction of morals or destruction of the public morality. Mm-hmm. Why? Because four people have to witness not cuddling, not... No. Penetration. Trustworthy individuals. Trustworthy individuals have to win. Now, what does that tell you? So Johnny Knuckles, he wouldn't qualify. You're not going to qualify. Okay. Right? Why is that? Because if you do that, you're clearly almost trying to be seen. Mm-hmm. You're destroying the society. Now, any child walks by and sees this, right? Mm-hmm. You're destroying the society. So this is like action pad pork on the street on the bench. Yes. You're seeing it. Like- exactly. Like you are doing this in the... Plain sight of four people, they saw the penetration. Okay. Right? So it's almost like it's a strong deterrent, but it's very impossible almost. It's to, very, very difficult. Islamic history, what do we have? Oh, you can probably count it. Yeah. Reason being is that anyone who wants to just fornicate, it's a sin between him and God. Yeah. But if he covers himself, the state can't, how would we know? Yeah. How do we know you did it? We don't know you did it. Mm-hmm. So uh, even if two people came, not enough. Right. You need four. So these things are deter- are. are, are it's not just the crime, it's all the social implication of the crime. Mm-hmm. So, what else in the Sharia that I think a lot of people like the taxation laws? Like taxation is very difficult to justify in the Sharia. To take people's money? People would love this. If you gave them ex- oh. a, a, a choice, A or B, 
this yep. way, God's way, or the system way. What Here, are the, all the Republicans would love this part of it. Yeah, right. They the, they would love the they would love this part, but not all the other. Uh, some of the other rules uh, on capitalism would be they wouldn't like the it. interest, right? The, the interest the, the also. But that's a, if you go to the Bible, it's forbidden. It's also. from the Bible too, yeah. and also the nature of competition. Mm-hmm. So the way that Walmart, Amazon will gobble up and destroy the competition is actually forbidden in Islam. Mm. It's forbidden in Islam, let's say, if, I have, if you have a, a shop and I have a shop and I want to do good to people, I don't need the money that much. I'm going to lower the prices so much that the people are going to benefit. They're going to love it. They're going to get all of their household goods really cheap. And I'll give some away too. Why? The, 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 the minister of finance comes, why are you doing this? Right? What is it? The SEC or whatever. Then why are you doing this? Hey, I want to be a nice guy. I see the people, they need pots, pans, they need fridges, they need, I want to give it to people to be happy. Yeah. So hold on a second. Not at the expense of your partner here, your, your neighbor who's selling the fridges at the actual price mm. they should be sold at. He's going to go out of business. You're not allowed to do that. Mm. You're not allowed to do it. Uh, so we have to monitor. You have to guard you're even your you're not allowed to cut through your competition in Islam. That's number one. Number two, taxation only for the protection internally and externally. And anything that um is more efficient when you tax it, but you have to itemize it, like paving the streets, taking the garbage out, right? It, it's clearly better for society when the government makes one contract for the whole town mm-hmm. and takes care of instead of I have to make a contract you have to make a contract but is it anything like the 30 40 percent not value? even it's never going to be close it has to be itemized yeah right and it's not my business to pay to, to and it's not lawful for in Sharia to tax the people a certain amount of money and then say oh we'll, we'll deal with it where it's going to go mm-hmm. no I have to know where it's going because it's my money so on that respect that's also part of Sharia mm-hmm. guarding competition uh in business is part of Sharia, right? Um, personal property, sacred in Sharia. This is a lot more than than what they're they're, they're, they're trying to make out to be uh, uh, just what's bloody and vicious. Yeah, and it takes that uh, first step. Hopefully, uh, people um, who are watching now they can get a better picture, a better perspective. You, we covered a lot. Um, and I should correct myself: vicious in their eyes, mm-hmm. because one establishment of the head of a of a head. Okay, is protection for everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, in their eyes, bloody and vicious. They yeah. consider they consider that bloody and vicious. What about imprisoning somebody and depriving a mom from a son, mm-hmm. a wife from a husband, a son from a dad, and you imprison him and did what? He hangs out with other bad people and mm-hmm. learns the ways. Right? They get worse in jails. Yeah, so. but they do this deliberately. This like Martians came from outer space, and then you. Uh, Wanted to know about um, American culture, society, and all you talk about is the penal code. Exactly, right? yeah. But yeah. here, I mean, family, charity, a prayer, worshiping God, uh, being just, being, um, uh, you, you got so many positive things that you can go ahead and list, but they yeah. just focus on the, the penal code. That's why the best thing is for Muslims just to get to know people and to chit chat and to yeah. talk. It doesn't always have to be about. It serious subjects just yeah. let them see life as a muslim because at the end of the day um the way muslims live if they live uprightly should speak for itself mm-hmm. we would need to have any debates or arguments and in a nutshell what would you you would summarize islam the worship of one and only one god and being morally upright Is that... it's worship of one god and his prophets satan knew about god fo- fo- following his prophets following his prophets honoring them obeying them uh and obeying the last one mm-hmm. essentially the the last one to have come the update. You always get the updated, the update, right? The... Satan knew about God. Yes. What was his problem, Adam? Prophethood. You got to get. Pro- what is our issue with the Jews, with Jews, Judaism, and Christianity? It's prophethood. They have a concept of God, of course, different concept, but it's prophethood. Prophethood is so important because that's the only way we know how to to worship God and please Him and benefit from Him. You can't just make things up on your own. You can't make things up on your it's own. Not a big faith. You need to follow the updated last prophet. And that's Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings. And that, would that be automatically include all the preceding prophets, Jesus, Moses, Must Abraham? be automatically. Automatically. A Jewish person cannot say, okay, I'm taking, I'm, I accept Muhammad, I don't accept Jesus and Mary. No, you have to accept Jesus and Mary. Beautiful. This is the balanced, uh, complete way of life. Thank you very much. Where can it's people, my pleasure. They, they want to see, read more about you. Uh, well, you can come to YouTube at Safina Society's uh, channel, and that's where we have a live stream three times a week. 
uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern time. And you can see our shorts and our video clips there. Thank you very much. Zakalahayim. My pleasure. Assalamualaikum. And thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell. If you want to know more about this beautiful way of life, the complete way of life, and you want to read and get the Quran, visit us at thedeanshow.com. We'll get it sent to you. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Peace be with you.